Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to the show. My name is DJ Bionic, if you did not know, and I am black with another video. All right, y'all, I am here with a brand new movie review. Um, can you tell by my shirt what I'm reviewing? <laughs> So this week I'm reviewing Scream 6, the brand new movie just came out um, like last week, I think. It's got a 7.4 on Rotten Tomatoes. And this, in an unprecedented turn of events, is going to be a spoiler-free review. Yes, that's happening. That's happening. Right, so I'm not going to spoil anything in the movie, which is going to be a little difficult to do because there's so much that happens that can be spoiled. I will say um, maybe in a couple weeks, maybe like two or three weeks from now, I'll do a review that is spoiler filled just so more people have time to see the film, to enjoy it. Um, if you're a fan of the Scream franchise, I think you're really, really going to love this movie. And if you're a casual fan, I would consider myself a casual fan, kind of like the... Um, the Halloween movies. I'm not like a super fan. I don't know every single detail. I still, to this day, get Screams 2 and 3 mixed up. I like all the Scream movies. I have seen all the Scream movies. Um, and I think they are really, really good. I, I've, I watched a bunch of reviews after we watched the film. And like so many people, and I agree with this wholeheartedly from the community, that Scream is like the most consistent franchise quality-wise. Um, the Halloween movies, though I have not seen a chunk of the middle ones, get a little iffy. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street also get a little iffy towards the end, and like, to me, the Chucky movies are hilarious. When they switch from pure horror to camp, I think it is, like, a lot of people don't like Cedar Chucky. I love Cedar Chucky. That's not why we're here today. We are here today to talk about Scream 6, like I have said, probably 16 million times. If you like my videos, if you like my face, if you like my reviews, comment down below what you want me to review next. And comment down below if you want to see that spoiler-filled review because I really want to get into it. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every single time I post a video. I post twice or thrice a week, depending on how spicy I'm feeling. <laughs> we are on the road to 1,200 subscribers, and I can't do it without your help. So share me with your friends. Check out Mental Health Chat Monday. Listen to it and uh, watch it here. Stream it everywhere you listen to your podcast. It is my crowning achievement. And without further ado, let's get into this week's review. This film takes place directly after, like a year after uh, the events of Scream 5, which if you haven't seen Scream 5, I don't think you necessarily need to see Scream 5 to know what's happening in this movie. Um, you may be a little confused on some of the characters because we kind of have, in a weird way, new legacy characters developing with the core four. Um, so this movie stars Courtney, Arqu Courtney Arquette, oops, I'm sorry, girl. This movie stars Courtney Cox once again as Gail Weathers. She is the only legacy character now to be in every single movie in the franchise. Um, Melissa Barrera as Sam Carpenter. She's kind of our new final girl, um, along with Jenna Ortega, who I believe is also one of our new final girls. Um, Jasmine Savoy Brown as Mindy Meeks Martin. Uh, Mason Gooding as Chad Meeks. They are twins, apparently. I didn't realize they were twins. I, I mean, I guess it makes sense because they are essentially the same age. I knew they were siblings. I didn't realize they were twins. But Sam, Mindy, Tara, and Chad are kind of our new core set of characters. They're kind of our new Billy. Billy? Not Billy. Well, a little bit. Um, they're kind of our new um, Sydney, Gail, Dewey, Randy-ish kind of characters. This movie also stars Dermot Mulroney as Detective Bailey, Jack Champion as Ethan Landry, um, where is she at? Liana Liberato as Quinn Bailey, uh, and a bunch of other people. I'll get into them kind of later. Uh, but one of the things that people were really, really excited about with this particular film, this screen movie, is Hayden Panettiere coming back. Not only making her acting like resurgence and coming back to the world of film, but also coming back as the character Kirby Reed, which people apparently loved. I have seen Scream 4. I have no recollect recollection of what happens in that movie. I don't even remember Hayden Panettiere being in that movie. Like, and that's no shade to Hayden Panettiere because clearly she is a fan favorite, but like... 
I'm gonna have to watch it again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Somebody comment down below and tell me what happened to Scream 4, please. I'm gonna dread very lightly on the Nev Campbell issue. Um, I agree 100% that she should be paid. She has been the face of this franchise for many, many moons. Um, but I, I believe starting kind of with... Really, honestly, starting with Scream 4, but really in Scream 5... I feel like the addition of Sydney as a character was kind of shoehorned in. It, it, it was something that felt, I'm not gonna say unnecessary because Cindy is important to, Sydney is important to the franchise, but it felt fan servicey. You know what I mean? You know how they just do stuff just so the fans will be happy and they don't yell at them online. Um, I don't think this movie, Scream 6, needed Sydney at all. Honestly, I don't think it even really needed Gail. Um, but for my sake, I want Gail to continue to be the only one in every movie. So when they make a Scream 7, I want Gail. Even if, even if they give Gail the Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween Kills treatment, where she's just in the hospital the whole time dictating, I, I want Gail Weathers in every single Scream movie. Her character does the same thing in every movie. She comes in. She says, I'm Gail Weathers. She gets punched. And then she gets stabbed a bunch of times. <laughs> and she survives at the end. And I love that for Gail. And I love Courtney Cox as Gail. She's so iconic. Um, and hopefully, maybe in a couple years, you know, they can figure out what to do with Nev Campbell's character and bring her back. I would love to see Sydney back. But in this particular movie, there would have maybe been a teeny tiny little part for her. And I don't think it was necessary. Whatever they had planned for her, I don't think it was necessary. Um, I think this movie stood really, really well on its own. But also, pay Nev Campbell what she's worth. <laughs> like, run her her check. Run her her check, please, and thank you. All of that aside, let's kind of get into the story. And again, I'm going to tread lightly. I don't want to give any spoilers in this film. So, we start the movie kind of how most screen movies start, but this is a, a departure that I really, really enjoyed. So, and this won't be a spoiler because it's... Because, because of the way that happens. So, Samara Weaving, who you probably know from the movie Ready or Not, which if you haven't seen it, go watch that movie. Fantastic film. Um is at this this bar she's about to have like a blind tinder date she teaches a film studies class uh focusing on thrillers like slashers so she breaks every rule of the slasher she goes outside down dark alley and she ends up getting killed uh spoiler alert she ends up getting killed by someone in a screen mask in a ghost face mask now one thing that happens that we never see happen ever is the reveal of Ghostface immediately, immediately, but it's a whoop de wop. It's not the actual Ghostface, which is why I feel like that's not necessarily a spoiler because it's this person ends up getting killed immediately after that, and we get the traditional scream opening with the slash, and then the scream comes up. Oh, it was such a good, it was such a great way to kind of deter from the generic opening because the rest of the movie does kind of follow that boop 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 which we kind of have kind of come to see and accept from a screen movie uh so that happens and chaos ensues and it's oh man i'm trying to figure out how to really tell this story without spoilers man this is gonna be kind of hard uh, so basically what happens is um Sam's ID is found at the site of the first killing, so she kind of becomes a suspect. Uh, we see the story is essentially this. Sam has been hated online. Somebody started a rumor that she was the the killer. Oh, the killer. That um, she uh, orchestrated all the killings in Woodsboro in Scream 5. And so she's just been taunted on the streets, screamed at. She had a drink thrown on her. Like, all this crazy stuff is happening. She also is kind of, like, keeping an eye on Tara, Mindy, and Chad, uh, who all got severely injured in the first film and made it into this film and then get severely injured again in this film. So we meet this new detective. His name's Det Detective Bailey, played by Dermot Moroni. And he is the father of Quinn, who is now Tara and Sam's roommate. Uh, we meet Anika, 
played by Devin Nakoda and uh, Annika. Her name was Annika. They were calling her Annika, not Anika. Annika. I will say, I really kind of fell in love with this character in the few, you know, throughout the ep- the episode, throughout the sh- the the movie. She is Mindy's girlfriend. They have a really cute relationship. Uh, I think. I think it's best for me to stick to the characters in this. <laughs> so Mindy is kind of our Randy. She's giving the, the plot details. She's telling us what's going to happen. She's like, nobody's off limits. We're dealing with a franchise. Even the legacy characters can be killed. Even the main characters can be killed. And, and nobody is off limits. Um, and then we see Kirby come back. So wait, I'm jumping around a lot. Chad is kind of there. Uh, Mason Gooding does a good job. Every This movie is phenomenally acted. Jenna Ortega especially. She has this quality about her face where her range of emotion is so large. Like a lot of, a lot of people were like, oh my God, Lindsay, oh my God, she's so good at deadpan. But she has such a bright smile. My partner was saying this Um after we were kind of talking about the movie, like she has such a bright smile. She has such a warm energy on film, even when she is crying or screaming or covered in blood. Like she just, Jenna Ortega is a force to be reckoned with. And that child is only 20 years old. She is 20 and already, I can't wait to see what the future holds for her. I know she's probably going to be in a few stinkers. Every actor has been in. But my God, she is fantastic. Uh, Melissa Barrera is also really, really good. Her deadpan killer face. She has these like flashbacks to where. So we find out in Scream 5 that her dad is Billy Loomis and she's like seeing his ghost. uh, And he's like convincing her to kill. Um, And she has this like psycho killer face that she does that is so subtle but so effective beautiful acting from these two in the leads wonderful uh so we see a lot of the typical beats you know gail gets attacked in her apartment chaos ensues there um mindy gets attacked on the train we kind of saw that in the trailer chad gets attacked uh they gail after we meet kirby so kirby comes back as an FBI agent, she is helping them figure out the case. She's kind of been tracking the ghost face killings since her attack uh, in Scream 4. And we see they kind of use Kirby as um, a tool of sorts in this film. Uh, through Gale, they find this shrine that the current ghost face has created. And um, it's got everything. So the, the ghost face killers have been leaving masks behind from each killer in descending order. So starting with the most recent and ending with Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker. Um, so we see a bunch of the old masks and the killer is actually wearing the old We see um, the killer wearing the oldest mask. So Billy Loomis's mask and um, I believe it's his mom's mask are the two masks that are being worn by the killers. Um, That's not a spoiler either. That's just how things happen. Um, I am finding it really difficult to talk about this movie without spoiling most of it. (laughs) What they do differently in this movie is than, than other screen movies is the suspense the whole time I was on the edge of my seat thinking about what was going to happen rooting for the heroes root and and like the killings in this one are brutal Ghostface does not hold back Ghostface says we see him even in the trailer with a shotgun like Ghostface straight up blew somebody's head off child that is scary Uh, so they did a great job building the tension building the suspense making me my heart pound out of my chest um making me root for these characters even though like chad chad's character is not very interesting he's not really doing anything but 
I care about that character. I I hope that he makes it. I I hope that, you know, Mindy makes it. I hope that Tara and Sam make it because they've done such a good job in the first Scream or the Scream 5, the, the part of this new trilogy, I guess it's going to be. Um, Scream 5, building these characters and now in Scream 6, fleshing out their stories a little bit. Uh, one thing that felt kind of shoehorned in is it's like, romantic relationship between Tara and Chad. I didn't, I don't recall seeing anything about that in the first movie, but I guess, you know, a year passes and you go to college with somebody, you learn more about them, whatever, but it just didn't seem right to me. Um, Especially in the moments where it kind of came up. Like the one moment was definitely right the other moment was definitely not right. Um, I'll leave all that for my spoiler review. <laughs> I'm probably going to see this movie again. Uh, I will say that I fell for the red herring hard in this movie. Like hard, hard. And I usually don't. And I, a lot of people have been complaining about the... the um, killers being too obvious if you've seen the film do not spoil it for friends in the comments don't spoil it for anybody but if you saw the film and you got who the killer was immediately just comment down below and be like you dumb because <laughs> i eventually came around to the side of who the killer was but was very convinced that it was someone else uh like they duped me hard in this one and that usually doesn't happen uh, cause the killers are usually so obvious in these movies, like in Scream 5, I mean, if you haven't screen, seen Scream 5 by now, it was so obvious to me that Richie and Amber were the killers, especially Amber, like that bitch was so obvious, um, in Scream 4, I believe that was the one where, um, what the fuck is her name? Emma Roberts, I don't remember her character name, but she was obviously the killer. Clunk, one time with the killer. To me, it was a great red herring in this movie, the way they did it. Uh, what else haven't I covered about this film? The acting was phenomenal. The chase scenes were really great. The, the stunt choreography was phenomenal. Uh, and the tension building, they really did make this a very tense and scary film in that way. And I really appreciated that from this movie because, you know, we, we go to scream for camp. Uh, we go to scream for the rules to be broken. And this movie did break some of the rules a little bit, but not really. It stayed pretty close to the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The formula of a scream movie while still kind of subverting it a little bit. Um, I think Sam and Tara together are a force to be reckoned with as far as final girls i think they're doing a fantastic job and i think the core four is like a cute idea i i like the idea of having a new set of characters to carry along in these films with and like i said i do hope they bring nev back eventually at some point maybe 10 15 years down the road maybe two or three movies down the road you know i I personally said the only way I saw Nev Campbell being in this movie is if she was the killer. I thought that would be so wild uh, for her to snap and be the killer, but also it doesn't make sense for that to happen. I cannot believe y'all were gonna let me make this video and not mention the only other legacy character who has been in every single Scream film Roger Jackson, the voice of Scream, the voice of Ghostface. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe y'all was gonna let me embarrass myself out here in these streets like that. Roger Jackson's voice is the most iconic voice in horror history. Like, and you never see his face. Whose face you never see, I'll say it that way. Like, Freddy's voice is iconic, Chucky's voice is iconic. But when you think of iconic horror voices, don't you immediately go to the voice of Ghostface? Hello, Sydney. Like. What's your favorite scary movie? We all say that all the time. So shout out to Roger Jackson for consistently being an amazing, intel, blah, 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 an amazing and incredibly talented voice actor. We love to see it. Um, I can't believe I almost left it out of this review and I had to come in and post and add that. So <laughs> go Roger Jackson. Okay, back to the video great movie oh i do want to touch just briefly actually no i'm leaving the whole stu mockers alive thing i'm leaving that to y'all to fight about in the comments comment down below do you believe stu is still alive or do you believe he's dead because 
some of the videos I watch, some of the people who are like not necessarily hardcore, but some of the people who have theories about Stu being alive, they're some a little convincing, I will say. And I I do believe that it would be very interesting if some of these fan theories were true. Anyway, um, I don't really even know if I talked about the movie at all. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't know if I, I even really reviewed this movie. It's so hard to dance around those those spoilers because there's a lot of things. There's a lot of twists and turns in this movie. Uh, the Tara, or not Tara, Sam tases somebody in the balls. That was a great moment. Um, <laughs> she, she literally comes in. Tara's at this house party. This is towards the beginning of the movie. She literally comes in. She goes, excuse me, I'm just going to tase her in the balls real quick. And the guy's like, what? And she tases him in the balls. It was great. Um, Ghostface in the bodega uh, with the shotgun was terrifying. Um, a lot of people complain about these movies not being realistic. Uh, as far as like Ghostface could have easily killed them, he could have e like easily killed any of the people that he had uh, just quickly instead of monologuing or doing whatever and blah 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 blah. Whatever, like it's a movie. Suspend your disbelief a little bit. Like calm, like. Y'all want these movies to be a little bit too realistic. I, maybe, the, like, you can't have a movie if the thing that can happen happens. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Ghostface easily could have killed Sam and Tara in that bodega. But then we wouldn't have had the rest of the movie. Then the movie would have just been over. Like, what's the point in that? You want to watch a 20-minute movie? I don't. Oh, that's another thing. This movie was two hours and two minutes long, and I did not feel it. The movie was so tense, and it kept me so on the edge of my seat that I was very happy about the runtime. If it had been any shorter, I would have felt like it was rushed. The reveal, that's what I haven't talked about. The reveal at the end. Okay, so I was... I was thrown off, like I said. I fell for the red herring. Uh, the reveal of... The killer in disguise. Was both shocking and not shocking to me. Um, and that's... <laughs> all i can say without spoiling it um that's it i'm gonna end this re review right here because i'm 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 about to spoil this whole movie y'all i'm not good at spoiler free reviews uh that's it thank you so much for coming if you enjoyed this video make sure to comment down below what's your favorite screen movie um maybe maybe um before my spoiler review i'll do or at the end of my spoiler review i'll do uh like a ranking of my favorite screen movies in order because we just recently watched two three and i'm sure at some point we're going to go back and watch one and four and then i'll watch five before so i'll watch all the screen movies before my spoiler review spoiler review will come out in a couple weeks comment on this video though your scream film order I will tell you that this one is pretty high in my ranking, uh, and uh, I really, really, really like this movie. I really love the tension. I really love what they did with it. So comment down below what your favorite Scream movie is in your Scream film order. Which one's your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? Uh, how do you feel about Nev not being in the movie? What do you think about the legacy characters? Comment. Just comment your thoughts about Scream down below. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you get a notification every single, po every single time I post a video that's twice or thrice a week depending on how spicy I'm feeling. Make sure you hit the link down below in the description box to shop Lunar Size Hair Color. So it all goes to support the channel and support my music and all the incredible things that I have coming this year, as well as just supporting me. And all of my links are down there as well for my social media. I'm at Bionic on everything. It's called branding. Look it up. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Hello. What's your favorite scary movie? Ciao. Anyway.